today I'm going to be tying a sulfur sparkle dun. Uh, this is a fly that I typically carry in my box, but until recently in a trip to the South Holston Tailwater, I did not have very much appreciation or respect for. Now I am working on stocking up my fly box with a variation, an assortment of uh, sizes and colors of this fly. As you can see, let's see if I can show you this. Here we go. This is, uh, this is just a shot of two different variations of a medium yellow. The top row there has a bleached uh, deer hair wing and the bottom row has a natural color deer hair wing. And I am today, will be tying the same combinations except to, instead of doing a medium yellow body, body, I'll be using a light yellow body. Light sulfur body. The sulfur color is this Oregon Upstream Innovation. Uh, number 28, Sulfur Done. The ones that I tied last were using this, uh, I believe it's a Wopsy product, and it's just a sulfur yellow. It's a shade darker if you compare them here side by side. You can't really see them much there. There's just a slight difference, and that slight difference made all the difference in the world on the South Holston last time I was there. Let me zoom out just a touch, and I'll show you also the deer hair. Today I will be using a bleached deer hair. You can see it there. This is a short coastal deer hair, good for comparaduns. And I also have the natural deer hair. It's also a coastal short hair. You see them two side by side, and there is a color difference there. You can see one on the left is the bleach, the one on the right is the natural. Okay, let me zoom back in a little bit here where you can see the fly. I'm going to start off our thread here. This is a ADOT Light Cahill uh, Uni Thread. Just start off and wrap a base all the way down the shank to where it begins to break to go into the hook bend. So I can, trying to get the zoom here correct so that I can get as close as I can. The tailing material will be this Zelon material and this is an olive brown. So I'm just going to tie it in first and then I'll clip to size. Tie it in to the same point where I stopped my thread previously. Trim off the excess. I like to make the shuck about the same as the shaft length. So, that's probably pretty close, maybe a touch too long. Take another trim out of it there. Okay. Wind back forward again where I'm about two-thirds of the way up the hook shank. This hook that I'm currently using is a... I love this hook. I have just recently started tying with this hook. It is a TMCO 102Y size 15. And I also have this hook in a TMCO 102Y size 17. But if you like the even size hooks, I also tie it in a 16 in the TMCO 100s. I usually carry this uh, pattern in sizes 15, 16, 17, and 18 because these tailwater trout can be fickle. But if you are a Mustad fan, I also have it in the 948-45 size 18s. That's just a barbless of the 948-40. Those are left over from back in my commercial tying days. And just uh, slowly using those up. Okay, for the wing, I'm just going to pinch off a little clump of the bleached coastal deer hair. 
see here's you can't really see it We've got a little tuft lifted up there off the main part I'm going to clip it off it's starting to storm outside so you may hear a rumble of thunder every now and then after you clip it off you'll tend to see there's a few little fibers in there I just grab it by the end and I pull all those small fibers and the webbing out Those of them, they just add unnecessary bulk. Okay. Now, switch hands. And tie your wing in facing forward. And I like to make it just roughly the same length as the hook shank. Let me adjust my little mirror here so that or my magnifying glass so I can see. And this is a recent little trip that I'll tick to a tip that I learned from a buddy of mine who just started tying is to uh, actually wrap one loop around the deer hair before you secure it to the hook shank to keep it from separating. It's still going to roll a little, but you can always just twist it back to position. But by wrapping the loop around the deer hair by itself and then securing it to the hook shank, you prevent the uh, possibility of it getting away from you and the, all the fibers separating and going everywhere. So, pretty neat little trick there. I think he actually learned that from Hugh Hartzell. But, there's your props to you, Scott, since uh, very rarely mention you in these sort of things or on the blog but a uh, long time fishing buddy there teaching me something who's a newbie to fly tying so you can always learn something from people of various skill levels tie off a little tuft of uh, or pull out a little clump of dry fly poly dubbing I like to leave it kind of loose at first until I get it wrapped the first time and then once I get it wrapped, I can continually uh, tighten up my dubbing on it. I like to have a fairly nice tight body. I don't like to have my dubbing splayed all over the place. Put a little bit on at a time as you go. Don't don't try to put it all on one shot. Just it's always easier to put put a little bit as you go than it is to have too much and have to go back and take it off. So. Just take your time adding your dubbing. Be careful not to grab your deer hair as I just did there. Once again, make the first wrap, get it started, and then I can secure it as I go. Kind of build the body up. A nice tapered body is my preference with these flies. Now, I'm getting close to the wing post here. So I'm going to go up, pull off another tuft here. I don't quite need that much, so. I can wrap it in down here at the bottom. Dry fly poly is, dry fly poly dubbing is some great stuff. Much better than the natural stuff to, to me. Okay, then you pull the hair wing back. Start slowly wrapping it in. I need to tighten it up a little. It's getting a little bushy on me. Grab the wing, pull it back. Slowly make your way back to the base of the wing. Build your, build your head in there in front of the wing. Add a little bit more here to it so I can finish my head off. build me a nice big head. Another thing I like to I like to have a nice 
dense, densely woven synthetic body is because all that dense material packed in there makes it that much more difficult for your fly to take on water. Which, with these no hackle patterns, is an added benefit to allow it to float as long as possible. So then I take these and then I kind of splay the splay the deer hair out because it's it's still pliable. You can still manipulate it however you want to. Where's my little okay? I don't use head cement generally. I've I've never had a fly come unraveled. If you take your time and build it carefully and watch what you're doing and use the appropriate amount of thread and not add too much and have a nice small head on it then it's uh, it's not generally a problem so okay here is the fly the finished product Let's see can you see it there there we go so you got your little trailing shuck your wing splayed out there and probably a hundred and 120, 100, maybe even 140, 50 degree angle. So you're you're not you're not 180 degrees completely. You're not going to be riding completely horizontal on the water. Your wings are not going to be horizontal on the on the water. So, but a nice little tapered body. This one's got a slight little bump to it there on the back side that I didn't see as I was wrapping it. But still, it's a it'll still work very nice little pattern pretty easy to tie so there's the final product good luck to you and tight lines